I'm Chaplain Tim Bohr, the first TSC Deputy Command Chaplain. I want to talk to you about the blessings of living in the desert. You know, we often think of the desert as a barren and desolate place, and for good reason. It's dry, it's hot, there's big insects. And when the children of Israel left Egypt out of slavery and they went into the desert with Moses, they thought the same thing and they said to Moses, hey, were there no graves in Egypt that you brought us out here into the desert to die? And we may have similar feelings about our deployment and our time in the desert or if you're in Afghanistan in the wilderness. Now granted, being at Camp Arif, John, is more like being at an oasis with Starbucks and swimming pools. But still you might be asking yourself, why did God send me here? Or maybe this just sucks. But here's the thing, God often has other plans for our time in the desert. To be sure, the Israelites found a barren wasteland in the desert, but they also found God there. And when they look back on their history, they saw that time in the desert as one of the highlights of their nation. Here's the spiritual truth. We often find God in the desert, or more accurately, God finds us. Let me tell you about a soldier who found that to be true. Sergeant Perrin had never been to church before she arrived in the deserts of Iraq. There at the invitation of a battle buddy, she started coming to chapel. And while she was attending, she heard God's voice calling her. We had the privilege of baptizing Sergeant Perrin there in the desert, in the land of Abraham, because that's where she heard his voice. I want to encourage you to take this time in the desert or the wilderness of Afghanistan as a gift from God, to find him, to be found by him, to see his glory in a new way. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Another blessing of the desert is that the desert changes our perspective. I didn't think much about hydration before I came out here. Now, it's a difference between life and death. We're going for a drive back home. We just got in the car and we went for a drive. Here you need a four vehicle convoy with the battle buddy and the 50 cal. The desert changes the way we look at things. The same is true in our spiritual lives. The desert changes how we look at things. The same was true in the Bible of King David when he was hiding in the desert from King Saul. The Bible says in 1 Samuel that David stayed in the wilderness and in the hills of the desert of Ziph. And day after day Saul searched for him, but God did not hand David over into his hands. David didn't view the desert as a place of suffering. Instead, he saw it as God's place of safety for him. Now that's a different perspective. David's perspective is like the story of a Vietnam soldier who was on patrol and they got lost and radio contact was broken. And then the next morning they got on the radio and they heard this report from the sergeant. Sir, the enemy is to our north, to our south, to our east and to our west. And they said, oh, these guys are goners. And then the sergeant said, sir, they're not getting away from us this time. That's what we mean when we talk about a different perspective. So what is God's perspective on your time in the desert? How does he want you to look at things? Because the desert changes our perspective. I want to encourage you to consider looking at your deployment from God's perspective. Hi, I'm Chaplain Tim Bohr, and I want to continue our talks about the blessings of being in the desert. Imagine if you were in the middle of the desert or wilderness, miles from civilization. Well, your life would become very simple. It'd be simply about survival, water, shelter, food. See, being in the desert clarifies your purpose. It'd be very simple and it'd be very clear. The desert clarified the children of Israel's purpose as well. When Moses went before Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, he went with a very simple and clear message. He said, let my people go. Their simple purpose in going out into the wilderness was to worship God. See, here's the spiritual truth. Whenever God sends us out into the wilderness or the desert, it's always for a purpose. Chaplain Emil Kapoun is a Medal of Honor recipient from the Korean War. And when he went there, he knew God had sent him for a holy purpose. When his unit was surrounded by Chinese, he risked his life to retrieve the wounded under direct enemy fire. Given the opportunity to retreat as his unit was about to be overrun, he refused to leave the wounded and was captured. In the prison camps, he foraged for food and wood and even stole from his captors to help their survival. His fellow prisoners said he did more to instill a will to live and a spirit of hope than anyone else in that camp. 
He died in captivity on May 23, 1951. Being in Korea was a wilderness experience all by itself. Add to that captivity under the Chinese and Father Kapown was in an extreme desert experience. And yet through it all, he never wavered in his purpose. May I suggest to you that God was a big part of why Father Kapown could shine in that dark place. For you and I here in our own desert experience, I believe God has brought us here for His purposes. And it's going to be very clear and it's going to be very simple. It might be to deepen your faith or perhaps rediscover your faith, maybe to strengthen the relationship or just to be a blessing to others. I don't know what it is for you, but I know this, in God's hands, the desert clarifies our purpose. Hi, I'm Chaplain Tim Bohr, the first TC Deputy Command Chaplain. We want to continue our talks about the blessings that come from the desert. I was working out in the gym the other day, and I saw this guy in there who was huge. I told my wife when I got done with this deployment, I'd look just like him. Yeah, I don't think so. So how do bodybuilders do it? Well, by a combination of diet and exercise. Every athlete knows they have to do the same thing. They push their body to the limit to become stronger and faster. They challenge their bodies to become better. You know what they say, no pain, no gain. The desert has a way of challenging our faith as well to make us stronger. As we've already talked about, the desert is a harsh place, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. These challenges have not been given to us by God to break us down, but to make us stronger. For the children of Israel, the Bible describes their time in the desert as a time of testing. As it says in Hebrews 3 verse 8, the writer warns the children of Israel, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness. God sent them there to become his people. Now sadly, they missed that opportunity and they spent the next 40 years wandering around in the desert, grumbling and complaining. So the desert can do one of two things for us. It can make us stronger or it can make us bitter. But the choice is ours what happens. So the desert or the wilderness can be a place of blessing. Just like the weights in the gym make us stronger physically, so too the desert challenges our faith to make us spiritually stronger as well. So for you and I, let me encourage you to take this time in the desert as God's leading in your life to make your faith stronger. Just like he led the children of Israel into the desert to make them his people, I believe he has brought us here to have his will and his way in our lives. May you be blessed as you embrace the blessing God has for you.